And now, from North Platte High School Studio B, welcome to Bulldog Banner, where we explore the endless possibilities that education brings. This episode brought to you by MPPS Foundation and the Flower Market. I'm Tucker. I'm Will. And this is the Bulldog Banter. We talk about stuff, talk to people about stuff, and give you the latest banter. Bulldog style. Today, we're, we have our guest, Jimmy Pack. So, Jimmy, you've grown up here. What was your high school experience like? Um, I graduated in 2000, so my high school experience was a little different than your guys's. I was in the old building from the 1930s. Um, you know, our, our building is where your parking lot is at now. Um, it, was, uh, it was awesome, though. We had, you know, we had senior heater where only the cool seniors could sit. You were too scared to walk by it when you were a freshman or sophomore. Um, in fact, I had a wrestler make me sit on it when I was a sophomore, and I got yelled at by the volleyball players for being on the cool kid senior heater you had junior heater you know you had three floors on one end you had two floors on the other end um i think we had eight minute passing periods because it took so long to get from one side of the school to the other um it, it, it was it was really cool though you know we had a lot of pride in being bulldogs and 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 that's something i still see around here today but you know something i wouldn't ever trade is is going to high school here at north platte high what sports did you play while you're in high school um, I only played basketball. I played everything growing up when I was a, a freshman. You know, back then, Adams and Madison were still split, depending on what side of town he lived on. And when we came together as freshmen, we kind of realized, and, and we knew from playing travel ball, um, but we, we realized we had a really special team. Um, it was the first time I heard somebody start talking about maybe contending or making it to state. And seven of us decided we were going to focus only on basketball. And... You know, we got a lot of grief for that because all of us were all around athletes growing up. But uh, that freshman year, we went undefeated. And then, you know, we had some success as sophomores and a little bit as juniors. And then, you know, what happened our senior year happened. But, you know, just played basketball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How have you seen, like, North Platte change since growing up here and everything? Um, you know, obviously the new school is a lot different. I don't, you know, it's a beautiful building. The architecture is awesome. But, you know, I... I'm always going to favor my mm -hmm. old one, you know, yeah. the nostalgia. I, I just felt like it had more character, you know, just more more things. It wasn't these blocks and, and pods and all this kind of stuff. But um, it, it, North Platte, it, it comes and goes. It's up and down, you know. There's there's years you're going to have tons of success in athletics, and there's years that it's it's going to be a little bit more lean. But, you know, I don't, I don't think it's changed a, a ton, you know. Um, even coming back from college in 2007, you know, you still go down the ones, you know, where mm -hmm. the same rest, you yeah. know, Amigos is where Amigos was always at. Wendy's is where Wendy's was always at. So um, there's there's been changes in the community, changes in the high school, but but it's still the same old North Platte. Is there anything that you would like like to see a change? Um, maybe a little bit more consistency. You know, we had that a few years ago. You know, there was that amazing uh, hype video that they put together. You know, girls golf won a couple state titles. Mm -hmm. Boys won one, got runner up. You know, wrestling got runner up. And you just really feel that it's the, the school pride just, just oozing through everybody. And, you know, when I first started teaching here, that was something that I said I, I wanted to be a part of is, is people being kids, being proud to be from North Platte and being proud to be North Platte High. Um, you know, and I'm not saying that that's gone, but it, like I said, it, it, it ebbs and flows. Um, mm -hmm. it, it comes and goes. Um, when I was in high school, I remember, you know, we came out for districts and we went around the floor and the crowd was literally so loud we stopped because it hurt our ears when we came out, and that was something I was like, that's something I wish every kid could mm -hmm. experience. Like, yeah. we, like, turned and looked at our student section because we couldn't believe how loud they were. And and I get it, that that comes with success, you know, but but just that pride and always being a Bulldog. Yeah. You mentioned college. Did you play college basketball anywhere? or? I did. Um, I, was, I was very fortunate. You know, seven of us, I think six out of our seven seniors were lucky enough to play college basketball. So um, that's what I mean by we had a really successful team. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to play out here for Coach Kevin O'Connor. Um, it was Mid Plains back then. Um, I think he's the most successful junior college coach in, in history. And at the end of that two years, you know, had some success, but also had some – college is tough. College is really – it's a lot different than high school. And, you know, when I have parents ask me, what does my kid need to do to play college, I tell them they have to love practice. If you mm -hmm. don't love practice, you don't, have a, you don't have a prayer playing in college like – if you're not sitting in fourth period, like looking forward to practice, if you're only in it for the games and to have a jersey and to get a, mm -hmm. a hot homecoming date, college ain't for you. So um, I thought I was done at the end of those two years. And then um, 
just on a whim, I went to a showcase and there was a coach there from Colorado Springs and he reached out to me. So, you know, I thought, you know, how many people are fortunate enough to play four years of college? Um, wasn't ready to quite let it go yet. So I went out there and gave it a shot and um, I'm glad I did. It worked out. Mm -hmm. so, some of the best friends I have in life still talk to those guys every day. Um, I'll brag a little bit. I was senior year. I was lucky enough to be all conference player or on the all conference team in the RMAC. So um, played against some of my old high school buddies. Mm -hmm. I also played yeah. in the RMAC, so it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. What was that journey like to get to being a college basketball player? Painful. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, a lot of, lot of running. You know, I mean, I'm talking 5.30, 6 a.m., getting up running. I remember in Colorado one time we went and ran up, up the side of a hill. You know, we had this – our campus was built right in the side of a bluff, so our coach thought it would be a good idea for us to run up and down that at 6 in the morning. Uh, in the pouring rain, kids slipping down in the mud. <laughs> Yeah. You know, weight sessions, you know, you got to alter your schedule all the way around. Everything revolves around practice. Um, long road trips. We had a 12-hour road trip down into Kansas one time. Um, so, but those are things you wouldn't trade, you know, sitting on mm -hmm. the bus, coming up with stuff to do, um, hanging out with your buddies, you know, having two. This is back when 2K first came out. I played the original 2K. <laughs> there wasn't even a number on the other side of it. So, um Showing up late to practice one day because our 2K tournament went a little long. We, we regretted that one for a very long time. Um, but it, 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 was, it was an experience I, I'd never trade for mm -hmm. anything, you know. Um, but like I said, a lot, lot of weights, a lot of running. Um, my body's paying the toll for it now. Um, you know, my wife says it all the time. She wishes I hadn't done that, just seeing the knees and the back mm -hmm. and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't take it back for anything. You mentioned like the running. Do you really make your basketball players run all that much? I've heard stories that you like <laughs> kill them during practice. I mean, to me, it's not that much because I did it. So, yeah. <laughs> and I tell them the first day, I'll never ask them to do anything I didn't do. Everything they do was stuff that my coaches had me do. I'm not. I'm not very innovative. So, yeah. um, sweet sixteens. Uh, we run something called a twenty and twenty, which is twenty mm -hmm. twenty killers yeah. in twenty minutes, and the time drops all the way down. And it's tough. I mean, even on my college team, there's probably five kids on the team that could make all 20 of them. So, yeah, um, yeah. you got to be in shape to play basketball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your coaching experience been like? Any fun memories or? Um, it's it's that's been a journey. You know, I when I first moved back in 2007, I didn't get right into teaching, and yeah. my old coach, Coach Dan Moore, was still here, and he just asked me if I'd come to practice and help one day, and I didn't. I thought it was just for the day, and then he asked me to come back the next day, and then it turned to, why don't you just come on staff? So. Came back um, and did that for two years, and then Hershey called, and they needed a JV coach. So that was the first time I, I had gotten paid for coaching. And, you know, my first game, I didn't even know how to fill out a book. I didn't know where to where to sit. How to, I didn't know anything. And um, it was a learning experience. And then the teaching job opened up here, um, and I came back, and who's now our superintendent, Dr. Rhodes, um, they talked to me about coaching, talked to me about co uh, teaching, and then um, Coach Moore was still here. At that time, so I did that with him for a year with the freshman, and then he left, and Coach Kaminsky got it, and I was under him for 13 years. And there was definitely some times I, I questioned what I was doing. You know, yeah. I mean, coaching's coaching, but you know, all that you got all these ideas in your head, all these philosophies, all these things you wanted to do as a coach. Are you ever going to get the opportunity to actually do them? And and last year I finally got that chance to to lead the dogs. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's been awesome. What do you think some like the best memories, whether from track or basketball, have been in coaching? Um, definitely getting some of those guys in, in the jumps. You know, you talked mm -hmm. about coaching track. I coached that too. I start, actually started out with girls. A lot of people don't know that. I was girls jumps coach, and then there was some changeover mm -hmm. in coaching. So I went to boys. Um, and state's obviously the biggest yeah. thing. You know, yeah. state's where it's at. Um, but, but I'll tell you, the funnest part is, is coaching a freshman that maybe is jumping 13, 14, 15 feet. And then by their senior year, they're going 19, 20, mm -hmm. 21. Um, you know, everybody wants to go 20. That's kind of the big number in track. So first time somebody hits that 20 mark and you see the look on their face, yeah. uh, that's priceless. Mm -hmm. um, as far as basketball goes, I mean, there's practice plans. I mean, I, I love every part of it. So the games, obviously, it's all about winning and losing. or as That's what everybody focuses on in the community. But even the same thing there, seeing the growth, seeing a kid being able to make a shot they didn't used to be able mm -hmm. to or – guard somebody they didn't think they could or, or those kind of things. Uh, uh, 
what else do you think about like basketball? Do you want to have, share anything else about it or? Um, you know, I, I, I love the support of the community. Like I said, North Platte is a, is a place. It doesn't matter what sport it is. It's up and down. You know, football, a couple of years ago, we beat the number one team yeah. mm-hmm. in the state. And, and even being the announcer for Bulldog football, um, I kind of nerd out on that. That's mm-hmm. some, one of the things yeah. I'm, I'm, I love doing. Um, take a lot of pride in that, too. Rather I'm good or bad at it, I don't know, but I love doing it. And just being a small part of beating west side that was was mm-hmm. amazing you know going down talking to coach workmeister after the game and you know i've never won state i want to yeah. <laughs> but that's about as close as it's felt as, as that you know back to maybe back to when we won districts when i was in high school for basketball but uh you know i just loved seeing that and then even volleyball when they made the state finals you know several years ago softball you know but yeah. you know we have some ups and downs and people just have to understand we're not we're not like those east teams that we can go mm-hmm. and yeah. say okay every eighth grader come to this school and we're going to go for it you know that's that's not how it goes you get a couple classes that invest and they buy in and sometimes that buy-in even started when they were much younger but you know enjoy the highs and and deal with the lows mm-hmm. um and just enjoy the process yeah. all the way through so you talked about announcing like what got you into it? announcing everything uh a lot of stuff well morning announcements you know that's kind of become a a life of its Mm -hmm, own too and i I, again i'm sure there's some people that it annoys them and i probably do it more to annoy them than i do for the people that like it so um i just happened to be in the office one day and they asked me if i'd do announcements because the phones are ringing there's stuff going on i'm like okay i don't even know how to turn this thing on and then like two weeks later it's like the exact same situation happened they're like can you just take care of this for us every day and i'm like all right fine um, I don't know where the good morning North Platte High came from and throwback <laughs> Thursday and dynamite yeah. drop-ins. And it seems like every couple months we had something new, you know, mm-hmm. like last week was Top Gun week. Yeah. Don't know why. just was because I <laughs> watched Top Gun Sunday night. So, <laughs> um, And then football announcing, uh, Mr. Altig, who you can never replace, Coach Altig's dad was the announcer for, like, he did it when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I remember sitting under blankets at our district game and, hearing Mr. Altig on the mic. So when they came and asked me if I'd do it when he retired, I was like, I mean, it was just like, it was like a surreal moment. I mean, I know it sounds nerdy because it's announcing, but it's like, I, I've never even been in the booth before. Mm-hmm. You know, I grew up looking at the booth and, yeah. you know, running the stairs and basketball under that booth. And then, so I, first time I got on there, it was me and Mr. Livingston. We actually swapped quarters. And the first time I went and turned the mic on, like, I, I was probably as nervous as I've ever been for anything, <laughs> coaching, basketball, anything. So... When he retired, or I don't even know how it happened, then instead of switching quarters, I just took over the whole game, and it's just again one of those things I look forward to every yeah. year. It seems hard, like seeing all the players and knowing what to call and what not to call. I, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> There's a lot, you know. Like last year when we turned the video board on, I mean, the script for that thing was like this thick because you had all these sponsors, you had oh, you know yeah. all the kids <clears throat> from the elementary schools. Yeah, it, you know, you throw so much stuff in there, and it's it is a little nerve wracking trying to keep that all in order. Um, our, our athletic activities directors have done a great job of, of making those scripts and following it. But even even when we were getting ready to go live, my phone is ringing, and then they were telling me, hey, can you add this, this, and this? And I'm like, Dude, we're, we're live in like 10 <laughs> seconds. Like, <Yeah. laughs> like you guys got to figure this out. So, But it's 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 like anything, you know, there's a process to mm-hmm. it. But, you know, there's a spotter that sits next to me. It used to be Brandon Peterson, and he did an awesome job. Um, with his new job, he couldn't do it, so now Coach Whitney helps me out. So I couldn't do it without the spotter. They mm-hmm. they, they they see a lot of things and tell me what to say, um, tell me who got this or who got that. So we have a little process up there. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. What do you think about the new video? Where do you like it? Yeah, it's it's amazing. You know, when it they put it up, you know, obviously everybody compares it to the one in Grand Island because yeah. mm-hmm. that's like the biggest one in the state, I think. But you know, we don't have to have the biggest one in the state. It's yeah. it's it's on. <laughs> it's it's awesome. You know, the graphics are. are Amazing, Mr. Willie and his classes, all the graphics they put up there. Um, community loves it. The kids love it. So mm-hmm. um, that was that was amazing pulling that together. You know, Bauer Field's been in that same spot for the 19. I have a picture in my room of an aerial picture from 1936. It's been in that exact same spot. And one of the things I tell football players, you know, if you grew up in this community, if your dad grew up in this community, your grandpa maybe, they played on that same patch of turf that you did, you know, mm-hmm. that same soil that's under there. So there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears on that on that field. Yeah. Um, and one of the things with the video board, you know, I hope we get back is, you know, putting that our stadium's also named Memorial Stadium, you know, either on the press box or something out in front. 
oh, where there's yeah, that World War II cool. rock. Yeah, that's that's what that was there mm-hmm. for. It was in honor of those those Norplat kids that didn't come back from World War II. So that would look cool. Yeah. Yeah. What other questions do we have? I want to know what Mr. Pack was involved with in high school. Um, what I was involved with in high school, obviously, I did basketball. Um, I, w- I got really into journalism uh, my junior year. In fact, I almost majored in that. And, you know, we had a major ger- journalism team back then with Mr. Berkeley, the Bulldogger, all that kind of stuff. I think I even had an article that made it. They had some kind of state award. I didn't win, but he sent it in. I um, was really into journalism, really into basketball. Um, hanging out with the friends, obviously, probably – did a little bit more stuff than I shouldn't have done. Probably stuff you can't talk about on a podcast <laughs> with, with teenagers, but uh, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, just had fun, you know. Yeah. North Platte. When I look, I mean, I tell my kids all the time. Like, I just remember really getting sad, like the last two weeks of my senior year, like walking the halls and realizing, like, I wasn't going to be there anymore. Um, but you know, like they say, once a bulldog, always a bulldog. Mm-hmm. And we, there's even a YouTube video that you can watch. You can see the old high school and just watching that, that video sometimes. And you can see that straight shot that's like four and a half blocks long down our hallway. Um, but I was just into North Platte High. And I know it sounds cheesy. I, I know I said I bleed blue and gold. My wife graduated here. I graduated from here. My kids did, so or will. And I know it sounds cheesy, but I don't care. I'm going to say it till mm-hmm. yeah. forever. Yeah. So you talked about you never really planned on coaching. Did you plan on teaching at all? I did. Um, it's kind of I'm glad you asked that question. So when I was in fourth grade, our teacher asked us the age old question, what are you going to do when you grow up? And I wrote, I'm going to play pro baseball because that was my favorite sport mm-hmm. at the time. And the off season, I'm going to play pro football because <laughs> Bo Jackson was my favorite mm-hmm. athlete. And then I wrote in the off season from those two, I'm going to play pro basketball because I was in fourth grade and I didn't mm-hmm. know you can't do all three at the same time. And then the last thing I wrote, and my mom still has a piece of paper somewhere, I'm going to be a teacher. Um, from, from that point on, that, that, was my, that was my goal. That's what I always wanted to do. I always say I had some really terrible teachers growing up. Like, that was back when you could still tell kids they were stupid and they would kick you out. Of the, you know, I had a teacher that kicked me out because I didn't know how to read at a certain age. Um, come and get me because I thought I had learning disabilities and all that stuff. And I just remember how bad that made me feel. And I just, I, like, I don't want kids to feel like that. And I had some amazing teachers too, though. And the more I, I look, reflect on it, I realized my teaching style is impacted more from the, the amazing teachers that I had. And I did have just as many amazing ones that I had, ones that maybe weren't, weren't the best. And some of that was on me. You know, mm-hmm. I was kind of a knucklehead. But that's, that's, that's all I've ever wanted to do. You know, the only other thing I ever thought about was maybe law enforcement, which I looked into very briefly. But, uh, you know, I've come into work for 15 years and never once have I not wanted to. I've never once... Like got out of bed and be like, oh, I don't want to do this today. Like, I'm not gonna say I like do backflips every day when mm-hmm. I come in, but I've never once not wanted to come in in here, and I can't see myself ever being anywhere else. Yeah. So coming back to basketball, like, was it true that your dad was like a pro basketball player? Yeah, my dad played in the ABA, so they started up a, another pro league to try to compete with the NBA, and my dad was actually on a, a team that was ranked uh, in the top 10 all time. They were the Indiana State champions, which basketball is like football is here in Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were on an undefeated team. He played with a guy, George McGinnis, who's in the NBA Hall of Fame. So obviously they had a great player on their team. He went D1 and then he, uh, down in Tennessee, and then he went on to play in the ABA, and he played overseas for, I think, nine seasons over in Italy and France and places like that. Mm-hmm. So. When I was little, I thought that was really awesome. But then, because my dad's not around, I mean, my dad lives in Indiana still, and I lived here with my mom. Like, a lot of kids didn't believe me. They thought mm-hmm. I was making it up. Yeah. So my dad had to send me, like, all his photocopied <laughs> stuff of him, like, like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the picture. My dad's going up for a shot. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is, like, right behind him. And uh, there's a picture my dad has in his basement, him and Dr. J, Julie Serving. Um, so I had to get that. And people, and then, then well, then it turned into, well, if your dad is a pro basketball player, how come you should be better than you are? So <laughs> it's kind of been a blessing and a curse of yeah. <laughs> having, a, having a, but my dad wasn't around, you know, he didn't, I mean, I'm not knocking the dude, you know, it's what happened between him and my mom, but it wasn't like he was teaching me how to play mm-hmm. basketball. In fact, I didn't want to play basketball because I didn't want people saying I was trying to be mm-hmm. like my dad. Yeah. That's why baseball is my favorite and football is my favorite. And then it got to a point in like seventh grade where I was like, I'm a lot better at this than the other two. <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm not saying I'm good, but I, I just was better at that mm-hmm. than I was the other two. So um, that just became my passion. But it was kind of one of those things I tried to 
have a denial about when I was younger because I didn't want people saying I was trying yeah. to be like my yeah. dad because he wasn't around, you know. But, but yeah, it's uh, he played. You know, we still finally beat him in one on one. I'd go out there and see him in the summer. I beat him when I was I think 15 for the first time, and he never played me again. So. <laughs> Well, do you have any advice for young student athletes or anybody that wants to play sports or any students in general? Um, like I said earlier, enjoy the process. You know, it happens. I always tell kids your sophomore year is your worst year. It was for me. I didn't even know if I wanted to play anymore. You're usually on JV. You're looking at, like, you know, it, 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 if you stick with it, good things will happen. Mm -hmm. You know, you might not make it to college. You might not win state, but, but good things will happen. And you're, you're going to look back on it. When it's all said and done, if you stick with it for four years and, and, and you'll be proud of what you did, you know, you don't want to look back on it and be like, man, I wish I'd have kept playing after my sophomore year. Or I wish I'd have went out as a senior. I still have that. You know, I, I tell people all the time, I, I, one of my biggest regrets in high school is not playing football. I would love to run out on Bower Field with those guys, but I didn't do it. They're not going to ever let me do it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's how it is. So that's my advice. Don't ever not go out for something because you're going to regret it. So. Yeah. You know, work at it, work hard. You know, coaches are hard on you sometimes, but I always say if a coach is being hard on you, it's because they believe in you. Um, you need to start worrying when the coach stops talking to mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So, 100%. Well, I'm Tucker. I'm Will. And this has been the Bulldog Banter. Thank you for watching. Thanks, guys.